Hi guys, welcome to Ego is Bored. Uh, this is a new series I'm doing that I'll uh, pretty much release videos randomly on because uh, it depends when I'm feeling like doing it. Uh, but the idea is I'll be going over some concepts um, that aren't necessarily super advanced, but I'd say are intermediate at least. And uh, you can apply them to a lot of different things. And now the thing is, is a lot of these concepts anyway will be relatively simple um, to actually implement in code, but getting to understand why they work and how they work um, is, I guess, the interesting part. That's not necessarily complex, but it's, it's why it's at that upper level as opposed to being a beginner thing, like just creating new parts and stuff. So this is something that beginners can do, and I'm hoping that these tutorials will be interesting enough whenever I do decide to make them that it'll uh, start to pique, I guess, people's interest and get them to look into different topics and think about how they can actually use different concepts that maybe I haven't even actually done in these videos um, to start creating their own stuff. So um, let me know what you think in the comments. I'm hoping that you enjoy this. I probably spent a good 30 minutes of my day creating this PowerPoint, which is a little lame, but I felt that uh, PowerPoint was the best way uh, to put it together. But since this is my first episode of this, um, and I do intend to make more don't know what the actual date will be when I do that. Um, I'd like to know what you guys think if I should uh, continue to do it in this style or if there's a different way that you think would help better, would help uh, you learn better. Anyway, so let's learn what pitch is, um, or better yet, what pitch, yaw, and roll are. Um, so you may have heard the, the uh, terms before. They're most commonly used in, uh, I believe, aircraft control or something? I don't know. Anyway, they're <laughs> used for angles and whatnot in terms of how an object is actually oriented in, in terms of its angles. And as you can see, this plane's a really good example. So we have the uh, roll axis, which goes like this. We have the pitch axis, which goes like this. Um, so I, I guess I can give you actually good examples um, with, a, with our head. So if we're using the uh, yaw, for example, our yaw would be like turning our head left to right, so just going side to side. Um, our pitch axis would be like looking up and down, so if I look up into the ceiling, or if I look down at the floor. And our roll axis is tilting our head, so if, you know, like, you hear like a, a very uh, interesting question, you're like, pardon? Or something like that? And uh, you tilt your head. I'm just trying to, because I don't have a visual of my actual head, I'm trying to give you guys an example so you can understand that. Uh, but hopefully the plane gives you a good idea. Um, so we will be coming back to this plane image in a few seconds just because for orientation purposes. But for now, let's head on. So what can we use this for? Um, if you haven't noticed, I think I kind of mentioned it already, rotations. Um, in terms of game standards, you can use it for head rotation, arm rotation, pretty much any rotation that you want. Um, specifically pitch, because it's pitch, you know, up and down rotations. Um, so you get the point, it's an angle, and we can do math with it. Um, in this video, we'll be doing head rotations specifically, because they're pretty simple to do, and uh, it gets the concept of pitch across quite well, if I personally think so. Or, I personally think so. It, that it gets, ah, I can't speak today. Personally, I personally believe that it gets the, the idea across. And so as you can see from this GIF, um, I've already done all the code and stuff. Not that it's much, but I made this little GIF here of basically what the final product is going to be. It's not going to be that choppy, but I'm getting um, the idea across as to what you're doing. So it's the same as like being in real life. So wherever you're looking with your camera, your character is going to look in terms of the up and down um, aspect. So, how do we calculate the pitch? Um, surprisingly, or not surprisingly, depending on what you do or do not know, trigonometry. Um, so, how does that work? Well, let's take a look at these pictures. So, well, obviously, there's the trigonometry, the basics here. So, we have the Sakatoa. Um, but if we're just looking at it from a character's perspective, we don't have to use the three dimension, the, the, the entirety of the three dimensions when we're calculating this. Um, because when we're actually looking at the up and down, we can look at it from a 2D perspective. So this image, I tried to portray that. If we're looking at the character from the side, all we really have to do is get the way that they're looking actually up or down. So like if you were to actually measure my neck angle, you wouldn't be measuring it in 3D space. You'd be holding a protractor to my neck and seeing you know, the difference between my chin and my Adam's apple or whatever. Um, so just keep that into account because 
that's what makes this significantly easier. If it was three dimensions, then it'd be a bit difficult, but it's not. Um, so in terms of doing the simple math, there's a few things that we have to take into consideration. Um, first thing is first is that the hypotenuse is going to be one. Um, there's a reason for this. I will explain it later. Uh, but to ex to give a quick intro, I guess for anyone who knows what I'm talking about right now, uh, look vectors are units, so they only have one unit in them, which is why we get to use one. So I'll explain that later, but for now, for anyone who just understood that, now you're not hopefully dying on your seat. Um, and that we also need to set the origin of our angle so that it starts between the third and fourth quadrant. So the third and fourth quadrants are the bottom two um, parts of this grid. And so basically what I'm saying is that we need to assume that like this bottom line here, starting from here, is our essentially zero degrees. So if we take it from a top-down perspective, and then this is where I'm going to go back to the plane example, if we take it from a top-down perspective, we're looking at it uh, from essentially looking at into the cockpit of the plane from the top down. So it's like the plane's cockpit is facing our eyes and we're looking at the floor. And uh, we're taking it that from that perspective. So everything is essentially set to zero in that regard. Um, and, and the reason for that is basically because when we do our calculations later, if we don't use kind of like this essentially origin perspective, then our angles are going to be off by like 45 degrees or 90 degrees or whatever, wherever we did decide to start from, whatever arbitrary spot. So we need to use that origin of essentially always starting from the base, the bottom, that between three and four quadrant. quadrants. Ah. Um, so what we're going to use is a uh, sign, the sign um, thing. I don't, I don't know what you want to call it, sine theta. Uh, which basically equals y over 1. Now, if we go back to this and we think about Sakatoa, uh, which is sine, which is opposite over hypotenuse, if we're starting from the angle, which is a here, so if we're looking here, the angle, which is a, we want the y, which is the height, over the hypotenuse. And uh, as I was saying, we can assume that the hypotenuse is 1, so we only really need one value, which is y, <laughs> which is fantastic, because that makes the math even more simple. So now that we know this, we can, as I said, use the arc sine, uh, and we can do this in Roblox Lua by using math.a sine, which is short for math.arc sine, and then putting in the y value. Uh, and we don't need to do y divided by 1, because obviously y divided by 1 is just going to equal y either way. Um, so we also then need to take into consideration the origin, and we can do that simply by going math.arcsine y, and then add math.pi divided by 2. And so I've created a function here. All this stuff will be posted in the description. I'll probably post it as like an actual modeled script, but um, all this stuff will be here. So these are images. You don't have to worry about like pausing the video and copying it down. All right, so next up is where do we get the y value? Well, as I was talking about earlier, there are look vectors, which are, by definition, literally the facing direction of a C-frame value. It is which way the C-frame is facing, the coordinate frame is facing. Um, and they are, as I was explaining earlier, unit vectors. Um, and unit vectors are essentially just this facing direction, but in the most standard unit possible, which would be 1. So that's why we get to use the hypotenuse as 1. You don't really need to understand too much about unit vectors right now, other than the fact that they are one, and they're, they're not that complicated, but I'm probably not the best guy to be explaining them. Um, so which C-frame do we use? Because all C-frames have look vectors. Well, because we want to track the, cam the, the player's head, we're going to use the camera. So regardless of if the camera zoomed out here, like I've got in this little image, or if it's you know f right into the player's head, like first-person mode, um, we're going to be tracking the camera. So we'll use the camera's coordinate frame. Um, so I've created this little test thing that we can just play around with. Once again, this is in the description. Um, but the basic idea is that in this, it's going to uh, print the degree of the pitch. So um, as you can see, we're using the camera's coordinate frame and the look vector there. And uh, it'll print out which to the degree to which the player is looking. Um, now, it won't actually edit anything. This is just printing the actual math itself. We're going to apply it in a few seconds. Okay, so in order to actually rotate the head, we need to actually uh, use joints because the head is an essential part of the player's body. And if you've ever done any scripting before, or really anything 
to do with the player before, whether it's just playing around with the Explorer, you will probably know that if you remove the head, or if you break the joint connecting the head to the body, the player will die. So we can't actually remove the joint, but the good thing about this is that joints are highly maneuverable in terms of actually editing the way that they rotate and position and whatnot. So uh, we actually have to first get the joint, which we'll do later, and I didn't actually do in this little image down here, but I'm just showing you an example of the actual positioning and aspects of it. Um, so we want to rotate the joint with the newly found pitch value. So if you recall, and I didn't really explain this earlier, uh, luckily our cframe.angles, which is one of the constructors for cframe values, um, actually orders its pitch yaw and roll perfectly in like almost x, y, z standard. So pitch is going to be essentially where x would be, um, y, yaw is going to be where y would be, and z is going to be where roll would be. Now uh, luckily we don't really have to touch roll, but we do have to touch yaw, and I'll explain why in a second. But it's easy, and we don't have to do really calculations for it. Okay. Um, so we apply this to the uh, first coordinate frame of the neck joint. Um, so first things first, we have to use the, or we have to put the C frame new zero one with the Y on the one, um, because it's the standard position of the head. Um, joints are, you can read up on the article on the wiki. It does a great job of explaining it. I think it was actually recently rewritten or something like that. So I highly recommend taking a look at it. Um, but we basically have the, uh, I guess you could say almost offset because the uh, head would by default be in the exact same position as the torso because that's where the uh, neck's uh, base part is, where, where it applies its kind of offset to. Um, so if we didn't have these uh, coordinate uh, f frames, then it'd just be exactly where the torso is. So we have to kind of offset it by that one stud uh, on the Y value. So that's just the standard positioning. And then we can actually worry about the rotation, which is what we do uh, the C-frame angles here for. So we do the C-frame angles. Uh, we just use whatever our pitch value is. And then we use math.pi to actually rotate the head because we don't want it facing the wrong way. Um, so from there, we now know how to actually do the rotation. We just have to keep it updated. There's a few different ways that we can keep it updated. We can do a changed event on the camera. We can use a while loop, or we can use the render stepped event, which is what I used. So uh, if we just look at the code here, we have the player, we have the camera, we have the render stepped event. We just claim those variables at the beginning. Um, then we have our function that gets our pitch. And then we do our actual calculations every time the frame changes. So we calculate our pitch, put that in a variable, we find the neck, which is in the player dot character torso uh, neck, and then we do the actual calculations on the neck. And so this happens, as I said, every time the uh, frame changes. Um, so one important thing to note is I did just do this in a play solo test. It, I mean, this this code does work, but it is in a play solo test. Um, so you probably need to wait for the uh, torso and the neck and the character and all that to actually load in. You can't do it as quickly, but because I'm doing this all essentially client side. Um, it's instant, so that's why I'm not getting any, any errors with it. Anyway, let's take a look at it in action. Um, so here's the script here. I just put it in a local script under the starter pack, which is needed for a render step and using local player. And uh, there we go. We can see when I look look up in, in the air, my character also looks up. When I look down, my character looks down. And uh, that's pretty much that. And if I if I were to go into first person, which is this isn't a great example, I think I'll hop into a server just to show you guys this. Um, we'll see that other players can see when I'm which way I'm looking as well. There's a lot of windows open. <laughs> Hope this doesn't get too confusing. All right, I'm going to do this. Uh, OK. And I'm just going to close all these windows just because that's very condensed. <laughs> so we're just going to take a look at uh, player two here. Oops, this is a slight problem. 
So just watch player two on this screen. So when he looks up, down, up and down. And uh, you can do like a headbang thing. <laughs> and uh, that's pretty much all there is to it, guys. Um, so in terms of actually applying this to different things, I think you can start to get the idea. There is obviously math involved in it, but you can start to calculate angles like that. And uh, you can use them for many different purposes. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. As uh, I said, this is the first one. There's obviously things that I probably need to work on. But um, let me know how you liked it. And um, hopefully I will uh, make some changes that you guys like and dislike and whatever in the uh, next video whenever I decide to make that. So uh, thanks. Bye.